Think about this number. Only a quarter percent of voters right now have not yet made a decision, they think. About a quarter of voters have not made a decision on whether to vote for Donald Trump or Harris. That's what it's down to, about a quarter of voters. That means 75% of voters already know where they're going to cast a vote, whether that's in early voting, absentee voting, or on election day voting. And I think that that is huge when you look at these demographic falls for Harris. I mean, basically, I just want to get to it again just so people realize that when you go from getting 59% of the Latino vote in the last cycle to 38%, there's a number of states that can come into play. Like, that's why President Trump right now is only down, what, three points in New Mexico, Will? That's right. Yeah, there was a poll that came out that had President Trump only down three points in New Mexico yesterday. There's a lot of other kind of surprising polls. You even look at New York. New York doesn't get polled a lot, but one of the more recent polls showed that he was only losing to Harris in New York by nine points compared to losing in the final vote by more than 20 to Joe Biden. When you cinch these numbers up across the country and you realize that in 2020, which was a hotly contested election, uh, that the election came down to only tens of thousands of votes right. in Wisconsin, Michigan, Arizona, and Pennsylvania. Altogether, you're talking the low hundreds of thousands of votes. Uh, when you start seeing 20% drops in voting blocks that the Democrats have relied on for generations, for decades, of saying that we can almost assure that this voting block is going for us it, it, like 92% or 59%, then you start to see a 20% drop. Those are real numbers that a campaign has to freak out about because that isn't like, okay, well, we're going to win uh, the popular vote by a million and a half yeah. votes, so this doesn't cover it. No, where it does cover it is when you get to these swing states that come down to just tens of thousands of votes, and you're already seeing the early number voting skyrocket compared to 2020. You are seeing that Republicans have become more comfortable with the idea of early voting. I, as an anecdote, I early voted yesterday. Uh, Tennessee has had early voting for as long as I've lived here. It actually was kind of one of the yeah. early adopters for a southern red state of early voting. I've early voted in almost every election in Tennessee since 2008 when I moved here. And the voting, and, and normally those, you walk right in, you cast your vote, you walk out. That's kind of the yeah. ease of it. I went yesterday, suburban Nashville, waited 30 minutes outside before even getting in wow. the building on a Monday in the middle of the afternoon. Yeah. After lunch break, before people off work, 30 minutes in line to get in the door, get inside. There's a four-turn queue line once you get wow. inside, so about another eight minutes in that before I even check in, and they had seven registrars working. Wow. It wasn't just two people on a Monday. Right. Seven people moving people through. This isn't a competitive state for president, really even for the Senate race, or even I would say for the congressional races. People are voting in large numbers here in a way I've not seen in an early voting scenario that forecast to me, if that's happening in a red state, this turnout is going to be massive across the country. And if you're losing 20% in these key voting blocks for the Democrat party, basing their entire strategy for presidential elections of targeting a coalition of demographics, I think it spells real trouble for election day for Kamala Harris. Yeah, I mean, if you if we finish anything close, like on the Latino vote, where um, again Harris is only at thirty eight percent, so she's under fifty on the Latino vote, which means Donald Trump has got the majority of the Latino vote, and that on the black vote, uh, she's only up on Donald Trump, you know, about twenty two points instead of. Uh, what would usually be 92, so you'd be uh, considerably up, like 40 points uh, on where or, or more on where more like 50 points on where Donald Trump was. So like the fact that both in the Latino vote, the black vote, and even the Arab American vote, even with the protests and some of this anti-Israelism we've seen on college campuses and in major cities, and we're seeing it today in Minnesota, that obviously most Arab voters do not feel like they are, have to stand in solidarity with Hamas. Or the Palestinians will. They want to vote for the person they think is best for their small business and for their family. Well, and Jordan, to that point, so a recent poll from YouGov found that Trump is leading Kamala Harris 45% to 43% 
among Arab Americans. You've seen in Michigan, uh, a Yemeni American business owner that came out, he's a, a restaurant owner, a very popular restaurant that came out in support and did a video for Donald Trump. Rick Grinnell said he even met with that restaurant owner while he was in Michigan. You're seeing things like the, the leader of that city that has the first majority Arab American uh, city council in history. The mayor of that town came out and endorsed President Trump. In these are areas that based off the way that we've been told by the media, by the Harris campaign, by the Biden administration, that Arab Americans are gonna reject anyone that is fully endorsing Israel, standing behind our strongest ally in the Middle East, because uh, and it's gonna backfire for anyone that stands that way on American values and principles in the election. But it seems that they misplayed their hand there. They catered to the radicals and the, the terrorist supporters that support Hamas on college campuses for over a year, and now what we're seeing is that that's not translating to the people that are voting. It doesn't translate to the Ivy League educated uh, uh, teenagers and early 20 year olds that may or may not show up to vote, but it is not translating 100% to the communities when they are looked at as a voting block and not as Americans, not as people who will vote the best decision for their family, for their business. And I, I'm, I'm shocked at some of these polls because of what the media and Democrat strategists and, and politicians have told us for years and years. But the reality is when you're looking at this, you're starting to see uh, a, a fracture in the strategy that Democrats have used for decades. Yeah, let's go to Carlos in California on line one. Hey, Carlos. Hi. Hey, guys. This Saturday uh, here in California, in Los Angeles County, the voting centers will be opening up, and I'm looking forward to it. Go cast my vote for Donald Trump and go down the uh, Republican ticket. Well, I think this that's, that's awesome. And first of all, it's going to be big in California because you may be in a district where city council races are important, DA races are important, as well as uh, local elections, whether it's state or state house or state senate, and then of course you move to the congressional side as well as the senate side, but also the presidential side. Here's why it's important for all Republicans and conservatives in California to come out big for Donald Trump. It's not that you're going to win the popular vote as a Republican in California right now, but the more votes we can find for President Trump, if he is victorious on Election Day, based off the Electoral College votes and getting to 270, uh, we want to make sure that the left is not able to easily point out and say, you know what, the this is, uh, again, this is some kind of scam. You know, these people were bought off or somehow like this. Uh, it, it certainly, uh, you know, these people, how could they possibly be voting for President Trump. We saw the mockery yesterday of McDonald's. I mean, the fact that we are getting that President Trump is still to this day being mocked, being mocked because of the move he made yesterday, which many have said was brilliant, Will, of just him coming out the window and waving to his supporters because it showed, one, he's not afraid to go anywhere. He'll go to a UFC match, a college football game, a pro football game, because he knows when he walks in a lot of these rooms, he's going to get major cheers from the entire stadium. And we saw that in Pittsburgh. Uh, we've seen it in college football games as well. And I think ultimately, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what Democrats are then going to try to do is, is keep people on the voter rolls. So we know, for instance, that Florida has had to sue the Biden-Harris administration over the alleged refusal to remove illegal voters. And in Florida, the, the gov federal government not providing that info to Florida. I go back to Virginia where the DOJ, I mean, the Department of Justice and the DNC uh, together are working to say, no, you can't remove, you know, 6,000 people from the Virginia ballot or make sure they're not on there, even though they voluntarily clicked that they are in fact, that they are in fact non-citizen residents so if you're non-citizen but legally here you cannot vote and i think it's important that we tell those folks uh not to gaslight them and think that they can show up and make sure they don't get mailers in their uh, mailbox acting like they should and can go vote because then they're committing crimes as a non-citizen especially if it doesn't get caught initially and through research later on in the next month we find that there were all these people voting who had no right to vote because they were not U.S. citizens, and yet the Department of Justice, even when it comes down to, will, you know, 6,000 
which again is a big number in Virginia, but it's 6,000 people who said, I don't have a right to vote yet. I am not a citizen of the United States. And they, they signed on, they made that clear. And yet out of those 6,000, the Department of Justice, the Harris administration, they're suing Harris and Biden. They're suing saying, you can't remove those folks, even though they told you that they're not there illegally. Listen, the Biden-Harris DOJ has filed a lawsuit to allow these Im- illegal immigrants to vote. They want them on the voter rolls. Uh, we, you just heard about Virginia. We're now preparing to file an amicus brief in Florida. That brief is because that Ron DeSantis is asking for the information about who is here illegally that we know, who checked those boxes, and the Biden administration won't give them the info.